One of the side effects that has been looked at very closely in the studies to date have been these neurocognitive side effects, in part because there's some question about uh, changes in, in thinking or mental status or memory with the statins that have not been proven. In fact, I'm, I'm, um, I'm a bit skeptical, but still open-minded about it, with the statins. So the same kind of ad, uh, events are being looked at with the PCSK9 inhibitors. And the data so far, there's a numeric imbalance. There, our rates are slightly higher. Uh, it's not definitive in any way. And the ongoing studies are looking at this. One of them that I'm involved in, called the Foyer trial, is directly has a prospective sub-study doing formal neurocognitive testing to answer this question. You know, the rubber meets the road when you have patients who, despite being on their maximally tolerated dose of statins, and many of these patients are on very good doses of statins, and maybe even a second or third drug, still have very high cholesterols. And to say to them, you know, you need to wait another five, seven, eight years before you can try these drugs, which we know lower your blood cholesterol by 60%. I mean, to them, that's not fair, right? That's what gets uh, uh, patients or advocates of, of diseases with higher mortality or morbidity, like HIV or cancer, right, up in arms. They say, well, we can't wait that long. Um, you would ha have, hate to have somebody wait a decade and then suffer a stroke or a heart attack that could have been prevented. They're both antibodies to PCSK9. Uh, you know, structurally they're slightly different. Uh, their dosing's somewhat different. Um, but and the end result, as far as lowering cholesterol, is quite similar. Well, at the moment, not much, uh, because a uh, number of reasons. First, they're just newly available. I think pharmacies are just starting to stock them, and they're quite expensive. And I think insurance programs, at least in the states, are trying to figure out you know, how are they going to cover and for whom. Uh, I understand that the, the price out on the first one was 14600 U.S. a year, so over $1,000 a month, and you know, that'll place it out of reach of most, most, the vast majority of people unless they have some kind of coverage or support. What I would anticipate is if the, the large ongoing trials show that these drugs reduce uh, cardiovascular events, particularly heart attack strokes and would be wonderful also cardiovascular death, then I think uh, these drugs will be the add-on therapy to statins. Mm -hmm. So you should start, start with a statin, get it to the maximum dose. For a few people that might be zero milligrams of a statin, but, but most will tolerate some dose of a statin. And then add in the PCSK9 inhibitors if you're not to the level of LDL you want to be at for that patient. I definitely see these being used together, there's no doubt about it. Uh, if you use them together in many patients, you can get a very low uh, LDL, meaning below 50 or even below 30 milligrams per deciliter, so you know, below one millimole per liter. Um, at that level, I would predict the, the risk of heart attack and stroke would be exceedingly small. Uh, but we don't have a lot of experience at that level. Um, and there are other reasons why patients have heart attack and stroke, so diabetes, hypertension, etc. So. Um, I, it's not the cure, but it's, it's moving the ball a long way down the field. I mean, this is, this is a long pass. I think uh, most of the cardiologists uh, that I've spoken to in Europe and, and, and uh, in North America uh, are strong believers in this, what we call the LDL hypothesis, which is, you know, the LDL is the major driver of uh, atherosclerosis. If you can lower the LDL, you're going to lower your risk of, of atherosclerotic events, heart attack, stroke, peripheral arterial disease. And since the PCSK9 inhibitors target the LDL receptor, actually, you know, allow them to recirculate and do their job more effectively, you know, we anticipate that they would be effective to prevent these events. And I think it's a really exciting time. So this is kind of a, uh, not even once in a decade, almost once in a generational type change. If these large ongoing phase three trials, uh, and there's four of them ongoing with three different PCSK9 inhibitors, show that these drugs uh, reduced heart attack, stroke, and cardiovascular death, I think 
uh, that's a home run. That's a huge thing. And, and, and do it safely. Well, there are a couple of other uh, uh, drugs being developed that target um, pathways in the cholesterol metabolism other than the LDL receptor, which is what both statins and PCSK9 inhibitors have in common. And uh, so uh, that may be, uh, uh, we'll have to see how those classes of drugs pan out. I think there are other interesting uh, ongoing developments studying the genetics of heart disease. Um, and then there are other risk factors beyond cholesterol.